Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and welcome back to my channel where we make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials. But I have not been doing a lot of cookie tutorials lately, so I thought we would do one today. So I'm actually completing this order for my friend Embers and Ash here on YouTube, and one of her favorite colors is beige. So for her son's first birthday, she wanted to do kind of a beer theme. I've never really heard of this for a kid, but I think this is actually trending. I've seen it a lot for baby showers as well. So firstly what I did was I mixed up that beige-ish beer color. Now I personally am not a beer drinker so I'm not super well versed in this. I did have to look up several pictures to make sure that I was kind of getting that color right. And in order to get this color as you saw before I mixed up some yellow and some browns and a little bit of airbrush gold as well but not the shiny airbrush gold just the matte regular color. Now I'll put my royal icing recipe down in the description box below, but honestly it's nothing too special. It's one cup of icing sugar and one tablespoon of meringue powder mixed with however much water you want. Now I mix my water in until I get a consistency that can actually flood the cookie without flooding over. It does take a little while to really get this right, so you definitely want to play around with it before you actually place it on your cookie. You want your frosting to have enough viscosity so that it holds its shape, but it falls into itself. And I don't even have to use a pick or anything to get this to fall back into itself. It automatically will do it over time. Pretty much once you're done about two cookies, it should be perfectly flattened out. Now, the thing is, whenever you're mixing up your royal icing, you do want to make sure that you use some sort of mixer. It can be a hand mixer or a stand mixer, but I find when you try and mix it by hand, it just takes a long, long time. I still find that it's totally doable by hand, it's just if you want to save your hand strength and you want to save some time, definitely go that route of getting something else to mix up that royal icing. And also, the reason that we have to mix it in the first place and quite vigorously is so that we get that body and that viscosity that we're looking for. One of the biggest mistakes I made when I first started decorating sugar cookies was I didn't have that really nice puff with the icing. So everything had this really kind of chunky outline and then was filled in with this super, super thin frosting. So once I discovered that your royal icing actually needs some body to it, then I was able to make cookies that I was a lot more happy with. Cookie decorating in its simplest form is basically laying on layers of foundation. And what I did there was I only laid down the foundation for that beer colored portion because I'm going to airbrush it, but I can't airbrush it until it's fully dry. So while I'm doing these onesie cookies right here, which is the exact same pipe and flood that I did before, I actually put those beer cookies into the oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want to know why I did that, you can go ahead and check out this video in the right hand corner. So as I'm doing this, and those other cookies are drying, I'm doing the exact same thing. And again, like I said, I didn't do anything to that cookie for that icing to settle down. Now, this may look like I'm actually putting on some piping icing on top of the flooded cookie, but this is a wet on wet technique. But because of the consistency of my royal icing, it takes a couple seconds for that to really inlay into that frosting. And this is going to be a little beer mug on a onesie. Now, if you're new to my channel, and honestly, I haven't done a cookie tutorial in a long time, so I'll say this for my regulars as well, that I do like to show how I go about decorating cookies in the exact order that I do it in. This is just my way of saving my time and making sure that I'm making the most out of every minute. When I first started decorating cookies, I had so many hours of just wait time. But ever since I've done my dehydration trick, I really never have to do that anymore and I'm always making sure that I'm doing some sort of job. So while those other cookies are drying in the oven, I am actually going to take this and airbrush those other portions. Now, I am going to be 100% honest with you guys, my airbrush was very mad at me today because I left a little tiny bit of color in there from the previous time that I used this, so I was getting a a little bit of overspray. Not a huge, huge deal for something like this because I want it to kind of just look haphazard, but if I wanted to have a clean, pristine pattern, I definitely would have probably spent an extra 30 minutes trying to unclog this perfectly. But I just want a few of these bubbles here and there and a little bit of shadowing on the outside. Also, I'm using brown for these bubbles 
Because I ran out of my gold airbrush color, and again, this is not the sheen, this is just the regular flat color that gives it a really nice honeyed tone, which I feel is a little bit closer to the beer color than this, but I think it's okay. It'll do for now. It's just a little bit darker than I would like it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that glass portion, and I will say I could have probably gone the distance and done this maybe with isomalt or a homemade isomalt to make it look like glass, but instead I did decided to go with this white, which kind of gives it a little bit more of a cartoony look in my opinion. Now on this particular cookie, it was my starter cookie, which as you know, when you're trying out a new thing that you haven't really thought of completely how you want to do it, sometimes you end up scraping off some of that icing. So it was kind of messy looking, but again, don't worry if that happens to you. You can just cover it up no need to fret and honestly i used to go through so many reject cookies when i really should have just scraped things off and started it again but when you're first starting out you think that it's unsalvageable but don't worry everything is pretty much salvageable especially when that icing is still wet so now what I'm going to do is I'm going in and I'm filling this back in. And again, the reason that I did this second after the airbrush is so that I don't get any overspray on my white. Now we're going to create some of those bubbles that are frothing up on this beer. And the reason that I'm doing this so spread apart is because I'm using my pipe and flood consistency. So if this were a thicker consistency, I could just put all the bubbles on at once, but I didn't want to have so much peaking happening on top of the bubbles. So I'm just using my pipe and flood and then we're going to fill in those gaps later on. Same thing with the top of those bottle caps too. I did a few of those lines and then I'll finish off that center line later. And as you can see here, I'm filling in those gaps with some more bubbles. Now, of course, before adding on any additional bubbles, you want to make sure that it's fully dry so that they don't sink into one another. Now, we're finally going back to those onesies. And yes, my edible pen did indent my icing just a little bit. I'm sure we've all had that happen, but have no fear. Again, we can always cover it up. And I am using my edible pen here to kind of create a little bit of a sketched look. You can also do this pop out on top, but I wanted to make it look like more like a shirt would be where it doesn't pop out. It's just kind of a printed image on the onesie. Now I'm doing this all freehand today, but if you don't feel comfortable freehanding things, by all means go ahead and project that image on there. Or if you can find a mini cookie cutter, you can trace that. Do whatever works for you. Now I'm using some pipe and flood consistency. It's the same consistency we've been using all throughout so far, and I'm creating some little bubbles. My friend's husband absolutely loves puns and he brews his own beer. So I wanted to include some sort of pun, which I found on the internet, that both linked his love of beer and something to do with babies or kids or turning one. Now, whenever you're using an edible pen on a cookie, it is pretty easy to write on and it glides pretty smoothly, but I will say, especially when you're in a rush, definitely use a light, light hand whenever you're applying some of that edible pen on there because you can puncture it just like I did earlier. Now I'm going to go ahead and again, the same type of flood and pipe consistency. You can also use this to create small details like this. As long as the details don't touch each other, you're probably going to be just fine. Now you can have it so loose that it won't actually make nice lines. So you might have to re-whip and add a little bit of icing sugar or a little bit more meringue powder. Again, we're going in with pipe and flood consistency with a little tiny, tiny bit of extra meringue powder in there. This just makes it hold its shape just a little bit more when I'm doing things like writing, but this writing is still pretty thick. I'm also going in with some more edible pen and I'm just creating this little design here. Now I'm trying to kind of incorporate everything to do with the one-year-old, but while still making it beer themed. I'm sure a lot of you guys will get asked to do creative creative things like this. People love these types of trends. I see a lot of baby brewing trends when it comes to things like a baby shower that has a beer theme, but I don't see a whole lot of first birthday and beer stuff. So it was a little bit tricky to kind of think up how I could make sure that I incorporated everything. So I'm also going to be adding on a few of those details here. Again, it's the same pipe and flood consistency. And when you get your pipe and flood consistency right, you can actually do a whole lot more with it than you think. This is going to be a little beer mug on the front, just really simplistic, no writing for that one. Now, once these little beer bottles have actually dried, 
I'm going to go ahead and write this logger sign on here. And every time I hear the word logger, all I can think of is that episode in Friends where they are talking about the difference between a beer and a logger. And to this day, I still really don't know the answer. But like I said, I'm not super well versed in this. Then I went ahead and I added in an R again with that consistency that was just slightly, slightly thicker than a flood and pipe consistency. But it's not so thick that you see the lines of that R. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up all of those other details. I'm adding in some sketchy lines because I did a little bit of sketching on those onesies, so I'm kind of giving it that little bit of flair and look. I'm also going in now with a little bit of luster dust mixed with vodka, and I'm painting that R just to give it a little bit of pop. Now I will say that this particular kind of cookie set doesn't have a whole lot of coloring in it, but like I mentioned, my friend's favorite color is beige. She likes all of those beiges and whites, so we're trying to keep it fairly simple. I'm also adding in just a little bit of that realism by having this cap a little bit silver and I am doing that with a silver airbrush color that I just painted on. If you guys have watched my channel before then you know how much I love to paint with edible airbrush colors. I just find it's way easier and I can just have it on hand without having to mix things up. That being said there is always a place for actual edible paint formulas and luster dust mixed with vodka. Now let's get into the pricing of these cookies. Now the pricing of these cookies is pretty straightforward. This would only be a custom order because these are far too specialized for a stock order and that would be the pricing right there in Canadian dollars and of course I always have a 24 cookie order minimum. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!